Today I want to talk to you a little bit about Fuzzy Finder, which is FZF. It's a really cool command line utility. Those of you that have been around Linux for a while, you probably have heard of FZF. Uh, if you're new to Linux, you may not have heard it, but it's a, a such a useful utility. I think everyone should know about this program. Basically, it is a command line way to filter information via a menu system that it creates. So you pipe some information into Fuzzy Finder and it creates a little menu for you to you know, filter out, you know, you can do a quick search and you can do selections. You can either choose one item or if you want to, you can select multiple items. It's a really neat way, especially to create some really useful scripts on Linux. So let me go ahead and open a terminal and let me show you guys what FZF is. So let me clear the screen and zoom way in. If I type FZF without any flags or options, it's going to basically do an ls, a recursive ls in my home directory here. And you can see it's searching through hundreds of thousands of files here. And you know, I can you know, filter this information by just start typing for something. For example, maybe I'm searching for the bash rc. You know, this is a lot of information, so it's going to take a while. I should have picked a directory that wasn't so cluttered, but it found the bash rc. If I hit enter right now, it's going to print the output dot bash rc on you know, my selection to standard output now you're probably wondering well that's not very useful right it's just printing to standard output well actually that is very useful because you can do all kinds of things where you can run a command and you could pipe it into fzf and then whatever the output that fzf you know chooses you know for example if my command was the ls command actually we could actually do that let's do a ls dash la and then We'll pipe that into FZF, so I'll get the fuzzy finder list, and then I'll select it, and then the output's going to be the file I, I choose, and then I could tell it to then do something. We could use XORGs, for example. I could do an XORGs, and I can just tell it, this really won't make too much sense, but I could you know, just cat out the information. And if I constructed this command properly, if I hit enter right now, it just did a ls in my home directory, a regular ls, not a recursive ls, so there's a lot less information here. I could search for something. Once again, I'll search for my bash rc. I could hit enter, and if I had uh, constructed the command correctly, it should have did the cat command. It says invalid option dash r. Uh, that's because the ls command that I did was ls dash la. So it didn't just grab the file name, it grabbed all of this information, the read write permissions and all of that. So let's reconstruct that in a way that would work. So how about ls dash a, not ls dash la. And now, yeah, now I get bash rc. And if I hit enter, it cats the bash rc. So there you go. So that is how useful fuzzy finder is you know, because whatever the output from it is you just pass it along to the next command it can involve xorgs or you know sometimes you'll just feed it into a different command by the way if you're not familiar with the standard uh, utility here xorgs what this is it takes the output from the previous command and then xorgs passes that output to the next command you know you for example cat in this case or i could have you know done a xorgs and then instead of cat i could have done rm for remove meaning the file i select it's going to delete that file or uh, mv for move the file or cp for copy the file you know i could do all kinds of really neat things and again that's where fuzzy finder really becomes like a scripter's best friend i mean i certainly could imagine doing something where you know i script using fzf maybe as a process killer kind of like a htop like program so to find processes running on the system i could do a ps space aux give it those options and you know i get this process list here it tells me the process ids and the name of the process yada 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 i up arrow and i pipe that into something like fuzzy finder and now i get the same information except in this fuzzy finder menu where i could filter it looking for a specific process i have the brave browser running somewhere so i could search for brave dash bin because i know that's the name of that binary that's running and if it's an id that i needed you know i could hit enter it's going to print that out to standard output but I probably if I was scripting I would you know filter that information using a, a program like awk maybe I want to awk the second field so I get the process ID so in this case I would do something like you know awk and then in single quotes inside braces dollar sign two and then with that information I would pipe that 
into something like xargs and tell xargs, you know, to basically uh, run the kill command, right, on, you know, that output, you know, that hopefully that output would be the process ID. I don't know if that would actually work. I don't know if this uh, command would work. I'm actually not trying to kill any processes, but again, that was just a quick example in my head of something that you could try to do with Fuzzy Finder. And I think that really makes the whole idea of running the PS command, finding the process ID you're looking to kill, and then running the kill command all as separate commands, you know, you could just add it to one command, heck, you could put it as an alias in your bash RC or your ZSHRC, whatever shell config, the fish config, right? You could just do, especially if it's a simple one-liner, you could add those kinds of aliases to your shell config, or you can make much more substantial scripts that are, you know, 50 lines long, 100 lines long, you know, write scripts designed specifically for Fuzzy Finder. Now, by default, Fuzzy Finder, when you do FCF, all you can choose is one item. If I hit enter, I get the one item I chose. But if you want to do a multi-select, give Fuzzy Finder this flag, dash, dash, multi. And now, don't hit enter. If you hit enter, you just, you know, hit the one selection. But if you do tab, watch what happens when I do tab. I select that, I hit tab again, I select that, I hit tab again, I select that. Now if I hit enter, I'm highlighted on bash logout, but I'm not selecting that. It's just going to do the things that I did the tab on. So it's going to do conky RC, bash RC, and bash profile. It's going to print those to standard output. And again, because you can do that multi-select, that is extremely useful, you know, depending on what you're trying to do. Of course, you wouldn't want the multi-flag on all the time with FZF. You know, it's only useful in certain use cases. But for example, like that process killing script that was imaginary that I showed you a second ago, right? You might be able to do something with the multi-flag with that if you wanted to kill multiple processes at a time instead of just the one, you know, then you would find this multi-flag very useful. In fact, let's do an example of using the multi-flag and then piping that information, the multiple selections into something else. So let's use the find command here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find and then period, find period is uh, period is this directory, which right now I'm in my home directory, dash type F. So we want to find all the files in this directory. Then I'm going to pipe that into FZF. I'm going to give it this dash dash multi flag here because I want to be able to select multiple files this time. And then with the multiple files that I select, what do I want to do? Well, let's pass it into XORGs. I'm going to do XORGs dash capital I and then the braces here. And then I wanted to pass that information on to the command. What command do I want to do? Why don't we just do a simple head dash n 10 and then the braces again. What this is going to do is it's going to select the files and then each of those files it's going to run the head dash n 10 command. So it's going to give me the first 10 lines of each file if I did this correctly. Let's run it. So let's search for things that have the word bash in it. How about bash RC? I forgot the home directory is so full of stuff. So let me do the tab key on bash RC, and then let's do the tab key on this bash RC that's in this repo, and then let's do the bash RC that's also in this repo as well. So I got three different bash RCs that I've selected. Now if I hit enter and I scripted this right, it should run the head command on all three of these files one after the other. And there you go. There is the first head. There is the second head. And there was no third head. I think uh, the other file was probably an empty file. So, But we've got two of them. So it definitely did work as expected. Now, one cool thing you can do with Fuzzy Finder is you can have it preview a file as you're searching through the menu. For example, let's do FZF dash dash preview. Now, by default, uh, dash dash preview, I don't think if you, if you give it no options, it's going to complain because it doesn't know what program to use to preview that file that you're highlighting. Now, typically what you want to do is probably cat and then do the braces here. So cat the file we're on. If I run that, you can see we get the cat command. So this is pretty cool. Now, if you want something a little more colorful, right, uh, what I would do is I would probably do the bat command and make sure you give bat dash dash color equals always. 
And you know, you could actually theme bat uh, much more fancy if you want as well. But you can see I get a nice little preview as I go through all of these files. And that is, of course, bat, which is kind of like cat, but it's a better cat, right? Bat is actually uh, a Rust program that uh, mimics cat, but it gives it fancy syntax highlighting and line numbers and all of that. And of course, uh, I could give bat flags to turn off the line numbers and you know, things maybe I don't want as part of the preview. Now, one thing to note when you're doing the preview, uh, depending on what you have going on in your shell config, right now I'm in fish, but whether I'm in fish, bash, or ZSH, uh, the fuzzy finder previews did not work out of the box as expected on my system and that's because my configs if I go to my fish config if I go to the bottom I have color script random you know this is my random shell color script so if I go to a different workspace and I open terminals you know I always get these new uh, ASCII art color scripts you know that's part of my shell color scripts program that's over on my GitLab you know but when you do the previews and fuzzy finder I was also getting the ASCII art as part of every preview. So the way around that is to make sure in the fish config, you can see I'm doing an if statement here, if status is interactive, then do the color script random. If it's not an interactive session, don't do the color script random. And by adding that to my fish config, you know, that's why, you know, when I do the previews, it looks right because otherwise I'm getting, you know, space invaders and other kinds of ASCII art here instead of what I really want, which is the actual text preview. Now, one cool thing you can do with Fuzzy Finder is a lot of times you can give it a command and then just do dollar sign, you know, FCF. And basically, it'll launch Fuzzy Finder here in my home directory in this case, because that's where I'm at. And then whatever I choose with Fuzzy Finder is going to run command and then the output from Fuzzy Finder. For example, if I did vim and then space dollar sign FCF, watch what happens. I'm going to go to my X resources file here. Let me hit enter and it just opened that in vim. Now, if I quit out of them, you know, I'm back in the show. And I literally could have used any program for that, any text editor, especially you'll find useful. I've got Genie on my system, which is a graphical text editor. And again, if I search for my Bash RC, let's open my Bash RC here in Genie. There is the Bash RC there. And then close that out. I'm back in the shell again. Let me clear the screen. Now, some of the most useful features with Fuzzy Finder are key bindings that are not enabled automatically when you install Fuzzy Finder because you actually have to add some stuff to your shell configs for these key bindings to work. So let me go back to my fish config as an example, but I have similar things in my bash RC and my ZSHRC because I have all three of those shells enabled on my system. But you can see I have this line here, FZF space dash dash fish pipe source. So I'm uh, sourcing basically a file somewhere on the system, a system file that uh, gives me better fish support here. So it enables these key bindings. I made a note here. It enables control T for a fuzzy select, control R for a fuzzy history, and alt C for a fuzzy CD. And this is the way it looks in the fish config. Now in the other shells, it's going to look totally different. It is documented on the fuzzy finder GitHub. If I actually scroll down a little bit, uh, may take me a second. This is a very lengthy documentation here. Uh, there's a lot to Fuzzy Finder, so sometimes it can be overwhelming, some of the information uh, for this program. It's a very simple program that can do so much, but here you go. Setting up your shell integration. Add this line to bash. I've already added it to my bash config. Add this line to ZSH. I've already added that to my ZSH config, and add this line to fish. And now I have key bindings for Fuzzy Finder, and let me show you the key bindings in action. So let me quit out of my fish config. So the first one is Control T. So Control T opens Fuzzy Finder in my home directory as usual, right? So what's the difference? Well, there's no difference uh, other than, you know, I didn't have to type Fuzzy Finder, you know, FCF, I can just control T and it's binded. And then, you know, I can choose what I want to choose. Now you may notice, hey, FCF does look different here. Why is the prompt on the top here? And why is the order reversed? Because by default, FCF looks like this here, right? 
but I had a different look with the control T key binding and that is because I also in my shell configs I added some default settings so if I go back to my config.fish so after I added this to my fish config I also added this line here FZF default ops. So we're uh, setting these default options in FZF. So I wanted the layout reversed. So instead of starting at the bottom and the list going toward the top, I want it starting at the top and going toward the bottom. And then I added a border, which is bold. I made the border rounded. That's why when I did the uh, control T key binding, it had a uh, rounded border around everything. It also had a margin of 3%. So a little bit of a margin instead of being right at the edges of the terminal. And I specified I wanted a certain color scheme, dark, and all of that equals this here, right? And But it still works the same way. If I choose bash RC, you know, it prints out bash RC, except this time, instead of it being output, it actually prints it right here in the command line so I can do something with that text. So that is really neat. So you can see, for example, if I wanted to vim control T bash RC vim dot bash RC, right? And then I just hit enter a really cool key binding. So that's control T. And again, you're not going to have that unless you add those lines, uh, those source lines to your shell configs. Another cool one was control R, which is your fuzzy history. And it's just your shell history, right? I can go back in my history and, you know, or I can search for a specific command. If I don't remember, I don't know, some command, the last command that I used for said, for example, you know, it was, you know, this command here, you know, I could hit Hit enter on that, get that command to pop up right there in the prompt, and I could hit enter on it if I wanted to run it. And the last one was Alt C, so it doesn't involve control. It's Alt C for change directory CD, right? And now it's just going to give me a fuzzy finder list of directories, and I could search for a particular directory. For example, I know I've got one called AUR. I could hit enter on that, and it just CD'd me into that directory. You can see I am in my home directory slash AUR. If I CD, I go back to home. So that is a very quick and cursory look at FZF. Now, FZF does have a man page, a very extensive man page. There's a ton of documentation for FZF, not just the man page, but on the GitHub. It's got lots of flags and options. There's so much you can do with it. Like this is just a scripter's dream as far as, you know, creating some really interesting menu systems and then piping information into these menu systems. You can get really creative with your scripting. And that's kind of what I plan to do with Fuzzy Finder. The reason I wanted to uh, rehash Fuzzy Finder a little bit on camera with you guys today is because I think I want to do a little bit more scripting. I haven't done any scripting videos in a while. I was thinking of what would be a cool project. Well, I think writing some cool bash scripts that incorporate fuzzy finder menus I think that's the way to go. So be on the lookout for those videos coming very shortly. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. And of course, I'm talking about Matt, Steve, Armor, Dragon, Cap, Caveman, Darloff, Daedalus, George, Lee, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Morgan, Two, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about Fuzzy Finder would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All those names you see on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, including great tools like FZF, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.